Welcome back to the channel guys. Preston here. I've got another fun car. I've been wanting to drive one of these. Uh, Toyota Prius. This is the limited edition. This is a front wheel drive model. But I've heard a lot of people saying over the last few years since this thing was announced that this new Prius is cool. So we're going to find out how cool it is. And I do like the styling on this. I've wanted to look at one. And so I'm really excited. I'm thankful for my friends at Corwin Toyota for letting me have a moment with this car. So I'm going to take it with you on a little drive, walk around it, and we'll see. Is the new Prius cool? I'll let you know. guys so just looking at this Prius again 2024 Toyota Prius limited edition so this is the top of the line edition and this one comes in front wheel drive this also you can get this in all-wheel drive um, this one comes in all-wheel drive so you get a, a little difference in the power which is in, pretty incredible that the all-wheel drive you'd think it would have a lot more power but actually only has two horsepower more than this front wheel drive version but this one comes in galaxy gray it's probably if i were to choose one this is probably the color i would want to choose i love the rims the sleek styling the lines on this car you know for years we've talked about uh, the toyota prius um, being the ultimate economy car right Getting the best fuel mileage, it always has gone really, really well on fuel mileage, but let's be honest, it's always been kind of uh, less exciting. Frumpy, maybe not as exciting. Certainly the people that own them, that I know have owned one, have loved it. It's been a great vehicle for them. It's been a vehicle that has taken them many, many miles without problems, just like we expect from Toyota. But this new Toyota brings something different to the game, and that is a new style. I, I love the lines. So if you look, look at the headlights, headlights, these LED headlights, just have a really sleek look around them. Oh my, my shadow, but um, yeah, look at those. Nice LEDs, got nice DRLs, the daytime running lights. You got the nice vent on the front. The roof slopes back pretty steep roof line for vehicles. Most vehicles do not have quite as steep of a roof line, but that's how they help to maintain such great fuel economy on this car. Has a really low drag coefficient, giving it good range. This one, let's look at what this one has here. So if we look at the sticker, this one's got an estimate EPA range of 52 across the board, so 52 city, 52 highway, creating a combined 52 miles per gallon. I don't know, that's pretty incredible. This specific spec, if you see as far as options, not a whole lot. It's got the floor liners, um, door sill protectors, but mostly this is how it comes, stock. And our suggested retail price is $36,379. I like the wheels on this thing. They've got a nice machined look. They've got the inlays of the, the machined look with the black. 
Actually, it looks like a, it's actually a gray. If we get in there and look at that, it actually looks like a dark gray that's on there. Tires on this thing. Let's see if we can find the size real quick for you. 195. It's upside down. 195.50 R19. It's not a super wide tire. It's got the, the badge. Toyota's new hybrid electric vehicle badge. It looks pretty cool. A limited model. It's got this sleek, dark Prius going right across the back. I like it. I like this car. I've wanted, like I've said, I've, I've been waiting to see it. It comes in a plug-in hybrid option, which hopefully we'll be able to get and bring to you sometime soon as well. Um, that one has an all-electric range of somewhere around 42 miles, which as a daily commuter, that would do my commute. So looking at this car, you some of the changes so the rear handle's actually here. You tuck behind and it's just a little button. You push the button and the door pops open. I've heard people kind of bag on that a little bit, but I like it. I think it looks good. It's functional, it's easy to use, and frankly, it's unique. That's what, that's what, isn't that kind of the essence of the Prius is unique, right? It's always done something that other cars wouldn't or couldn't do. Now it just does it with the style it looks really really good so let's uh let's take a look inside we'll look under the hood take a look at this hybrid motor system it's got a two liter motor we'll look at and give you some driving we'll go for a drive give you some impressions so let's get into that so both driver and passenger have this lock and unlock feature on the handle i have the keys in my pocket currently it's unlocked put your thumb you can lock it and you can walk away and the vehicle is secured. If you come back. Put your hand in it and unlock the door. And that's on both the driver and passenger side door. Nothing on the rear though. Get a look at the door panel. This is hard touch, a little bit soft. I'm it's plastic, but it's got a little softness to it. Good soft touch down down lower on the panel got all your window controls this one has uh, top of the line has memory seats for two drivers nice door seal Prius logo let's get a look at uh, the stickers for you and then this one comes in synthetic leather which is really comfy Power seat for the driver, power lumbar. Headlight controls, heated steering wheel. This is uh, how you control. This does not have a heads up display because it has a display right in front of you, but this controls some of your odometer trip settings here and the lighting for that display. Headlight control, and then this is Toyota's new steering wheel. You find this on a, a few of their vehicles. The BRZ has this, the Prius obviously does, and then I'm sure we'll see it on other vehicles as well. It's got a lot of buttons on it, but I find them to be fairly functional. Coming over here is center console. Right here, you got decent padding. Not a lot of storage, but it's pretty decent. You got a couple USB ports, USB-C that is. Modes, you can go EV mode, um, hold, your auto hold, parking brake, traction control, control your drive modes, and then this is your shifter knob, which is, I think it's really cool. It's a nice little functional shifter knob. Wireless phone charger, which we'll talk a little bit about. My phone actually, with the case on it, I have the iPhone 15 Pro Max and it does not charge in there with my case on. A couple more USB-Cs, storage tray, a couple, couple drink holders here. Under here you have extra storage. 
which everyone's mentioned that it actually has a saying under there. Hashtag hidden compartment. Interesting. It's got a lot of those little things. Some physical climate control buttons, heated seats, ventilated seats. This is where you change your HVAC speed and heat. Passenger also has heated and ventilated seat. Nice, easy to function vents here, and then a massive entertainment infotainment screen. Rear view mirror, you've got the home link buttons underneath. This one does have a sunroof here, and then a rear one as well. So you've got dual, so it's not a full panoramic sunroof, but you do have dual sunroofs, which is pretty nice. All right, coming to the back. Pretty basic door panel again, that harder plastic here, soft plastic door handle. This is all hard plastic as well, but it's good. Let's get in it. I'm going to give you my impressions here. So this seat is not all the way back, but it does come back further than where I sit just by turning the car off. So the seat came back automatically. I still have great leg room. Let's turn this around. So I don't know if you can see, see now. Um, I have enough headroom, barely at 5'8". Um, this has been another of the things people have given this uh, car is the nice sloping roof line creates for a low roof line at the head on the rear passengers. For me, it doesn't it doesn't affect me, but taller passengers certainly probably gonna have a little bit harder time fitting in here. I don't know if you could fit three adults back here. You could fit two adults and a child, but width-wise, it's probably not wide enough to fit three adults on a regular basis. But it is a comfy seat. It's not got pretty good cushion. I think I could ride in here for a little while if it was just me and another adult or another passenger back here. I think we'd be all right. Again, got a nice sunroof up there. And yeah, back seat's pretty nice. I'll give it a thumbs up. The back here, so underneath, you got your backup camera. And then right next to it is your button. On the Limited, you get a power lift gate. On the other models, you do not. It'll be manual. But you got this nice, nice little cargo cover. Keep your stuff protected. Yeah, it's a pretty decent size. This was part of the space that was compromised with the remodel. This is not open here. But underneath, you get a little bit of storage. It's not significant, it's a little styrofoam storage bin. And then this one has the cargo mat and a little storage bin over here. I think I could probably fit my golf clubs across there. I wish I had them to try it out, but it is a little narrow, but it's, it'd do fine. You could certainly put the seats down and go from there. With this, so here, you can detach this and put it away. this folds away if you don't want it up as you can see so they just come on done here and then you can fold that away and you have a nice open space you can reach from here you could reach the releases for these seats from the back so yeah pretty good back space to so close it right up here you can set the height of the door here, and then you can power close it with this button. So click that, tailgate will come down. Yeah, if you have a garage that is lower or you're constantly parking in a, a place with a lower parking garage height, you could set your tailgate not to go so high so it won't hit it. So that's the tailgate, pretty good space, nice little hatch. All right, so coming around the other side, Again, see the 
floorboard here. There's a little hump in the middle, um, but not significant. And then this back seat does have a center cup holder armrest. These fold forward, you can undo it here. It's a 60-40 split. So you can fold e either side down and then it has a, a nice little, this one comes with the, the seat back protectors and a, basically a bridge to cover the gap here in the middle. Lock back up real nice. Uh, let's take the front, front passenger. So the, we saw the driver has power seats, but the passenger, you get a manual seat, which for something you're buying for economy, I think that's probably okay. Obviously everything, everyone would love to be a passenger with power seats, but for a car that gets 52 miles to the gallon in all circumstances, we'll go with the, the manual seat. I'm okay with that. Power lock, single window over here. Let's take a look at the glove box. Yeah, decent glove box. It obviously fits everything that comes with the vehicle and then you could fit a few more of your personal items in there. I think you could even fit a tablet. Here's a look at that wireless phone charger. Let's see, let me, let's put my phone in there. All right. So, doesn't, the phone doesn't go way down in there, but like I said, I don't have a huge phone case on this thing. It's pretty thin, but with it on, it, it doesn't touch the charging mat, which unfortunately, I, I think that's a little bit of a miss. Um, I've, it's not unique to Toyota's car. I've had that in the Tesla we, we drove, had the same thing. And so it just kind of is what it is. I wish they were making it a little bit bigger. Some ambient lighting looks like it comes right here across the dash. I like the sleek look of this dash, carbon fiber look. So, so let's take a look under the hood. So pop the hood, we'll just go right here. latch for it. There it is. Sorry about the uh, camera here. All right, let's get back in here. So here is your two liter motor. It's going to be a hybrid motor. So it's two liter, four cylinder. This one's gonna put out 150 horsepower, 139 foot-pounds of torque just on the gas motor alone. It's pretty clean. Looks like a, a typical Toyota motor, real clean. Everything's in its place. This one combines with a permanent magnet motor for a combined 194 horsepower output. All right, so let's take this thing for a drive. Get in, start up. You can barely hear anything. Let's get ourselves set up here. This car is pretty comfortable. I, uh, let's talk about the seat. The bolstering's good. I am a bigger guy, and so um, I, I tend to not like the really narrow seats, but the bolstering's perfect for me. Seat's got good cushion. The uh, elbow rests are a good height. So looking out, I got pretty good view. The B pillar is, is actually just like the A pillar here. It's a little big, but I can see. I have good visibility. My mirrors, I have good visibility of my mirrors. That sloping windshield still affords me a pretty good view. I'm just gonna push my seat down just a bit. Let's see, let's get back to the home page. All right. So we're gonna shift it into gear. You pull the selector to the left and back, and we're off. So again, talking about the purpose of this vehicle, 
it looks really sleek and frankly it I think it looks like it could be really fast right it has a very sleek and quick looking profile but while it is quick it is still an economy vehicle it's a Prius right and so its goal is not to be quick its goal is to be efficient so let's see how it does on the road setting out I've got a pretty loud Bobcat right next to me pretty decent noise isolation a um, little bit of that engine noise comes through to the cabin but um, that's pretty typical of most vehicles and again one of the biggest complaints I heard about this vehicle in my studying uh, about it was the ability to see the instrument cluster here and I can adjust this steering wheel up and down I can adjust it to where the steering wheel does not hit my legs and I can see perfectly over top of it so I personally don't find that to be a problem being a four cylinder it's going this is going to bounce back between the electric motor and the uh, ice motor internal combustion motor to give you the best economy so occasionally if you if you hit it you can hear that little two cylinder kick in um, and you can hear it. it's whiny it's a four cylinder but again it's doing it, it its job is to provide efficiency not to provide high performance I think it absorbs the bumps at exactly the the level you'd expect for this price range it does pretty good it's pretty compliant it's a comfortable ride these seats I really impressed by these seats they're very very comfortable um, good visibility you know that was part of the the other ding to this vehicle from the previous generation was the view out the back of the window or out the hatch and yes I, it is limited it's smaller than your typical vehicle but I, I see the vehicles behind me I see what I need to see and I don't find it to be it's certainly not a game you know not gonna prevent me from trying to look at this car for my own purchase right comes with stop I don't believe this has any form of one pedal driving and if it does I haven't found it so I'll apologize if there is but um, it comes to a stop nicely the motor kicks off which I didn't really hear and then kicking it going again I don't I don't feel the jerkiness of some some auto start stops you have a jerky movement when you go to start again let's go in here because I want to see the energy flow and being able to see I believe I hope you'll be able to see this on the one camera so we'll get a look at this but this is your energy flow this is where your battery so the motor is currently showing as off and it is using just the battery power to inch me forward as I wait at this light so we'll watch what it does when we get going at this light otherwise let's talk about this heated ventilated seats are nice um, I think is it a nest is a necessity probably not um, here in Colorado I think at least heated seats are nice in a warmer climate I bet the cooled seats are pretty nice all right so let's see there you can see the the internal combustion motor kicked on for a moment otherwise right now we are driving on the electric motor only and as I give it a little more acceleration they combine to give us our power right and this it goes you can definitely hear that motor when you when you when you kick it a little bit when you push the accelerator but it drives nice it's smooth Toyota's really good done good at at kind of perfecting the hybrid motor system so to speak the interaction between the electric motor and the gas motor is seamless you can't feel when one is turning on or off I can only tell it's turning on and off by the screen here good visibility again nice comfort this is actually a car that I have personally been thinking of, of getting um, you know I 
course, if you ask my wife, I want to get every car I've ever seen ever, which is frankly true. But I was really interested in this car um, as a companion to the gas guzzling F-250 that I drive on a regular basis, you know, something to counter and offset my fuel costs. And this thing would be great. It has great range. This says we have 191 miles and we're like a third tank of fuel. And so with a full tank, you're up 450, 500 miles, especially once it gets calculating better fuel mileage than this was calculating just from shipment. So great range. That's always the hesitation with an electric vehicle, which gets great fuel mileage, right? Because it's all electric, is the range. Whereas this gives you kind of the best of both worlds, built by one of the best in the business of hybrids, Toyota, and uh, gives you no range anxiety whatsoever. Now the plug-in hybrid, which again, I hope to get one, it will give you all electric range for the 42 miles or thereabout and really gives you even more. Actually, that truly is the best of the both worlds. Um, and so you get the all electric motor and then it combines to create a hybrid motor system when it's not um, in electric mode or when you run out of the amount of electricity you need to be able to drive in just electric mode. Anyways, let me let me just give you my final thoughts here in the car because I got to get this car back to Corwin Toyota. They've been super nice. Let me just plug them again. Quincy at Corwin Toyota, he will help you out. The folks over at Corwin have been very, very kind to me as a creator, letting me have access to their vehicles. So I want to thank them again. If you are interested in this vehicle that is currently still for sale, or if you are interested in another Toyota, come see my friends at Corwin Toyota. They will get you hooked up and they will help you find, if they don't have the car that you're looking for, they'll help you find the one that you do want and, uh, and get it ordered in. So check out the Prius. It's a great car. It gets good mileage and it's fun to drive. Um, we didn't get it on backcountry roads, but um, to really open it up, but it's a brand new car. I don't want to do that to a car that I'm being loaned. So um, thank you for stopping by. Please subscribe, like the video if you enjoyed this, help me create more content going forward. And so we can continue to bring you more cars like this Thank you. Have a good day. Bye, guys.